So you want to know how all this stuff works, huh? Well, let's start right here at the blade. This is a one and a half horsepower saw. Not much power. But I can make it work with a four tooth blade. It's nine sixteenths of an inch wide on the teeth. Nine inch diameter blade. You can get a 10 inch into this saw. But well, now I'm using a nine. Four teeth. If you're going to run six teeth, you need at least three horsepower. If you're going to run eight teeth, you need at least five horsepower. The more teeth, the faster you can cut, but you have to have more horsepower to pull that. Okay, how come I go fast on the way in and slow on the way out? Okay, this is turning, and as it feeds in, this shaft will deflect slightly. It'll push up the pressure between the blade and the, and the shaft. So you can feed it in as fast as you got horsepower to run it, but then when you back out, you have to go slow because that will pull it to its plus or minus two thousandths as far as the tenon diameter. Backing it up is when it gets cleaned up. Gear motor, 90 volt DC, quarter horse. Variable speed, 125 RPM max. It'll slow down. It doesn't have to go real fast. The air off on the tail stock when you're running 100 PSI, you're closing with about 100 pounds of pressure on the part. It goes slower because there's just a 20 thousandths hole drilled into the into the exhaust ports. That's the way it goes slow. Running on four linear bearings. Turn ground and polish trap. Turn ground and polish. You don't want to let them get moisture wet, otherwise they'll corrode. Okay. Tail stock. Well, not tail stock. The, the tail of the machine support. It's just a nylon roller in there, but this has to roll back and forth. And it's kind of weird because it's wiggly, but it's only wiggly in the way that doesn't make any difference. It's so very rigid for up and down. It's on a two by four by quarters aluminum tube, 6061 aluminum, really tough stuff. You can get the tail stock, well, we send them out up to 16 feet long. That's what you cut stuff that's uh, material up to approximately 10 foot long. This is a little stop, so it can go through that tube there. You don't want it to fall off. So this is important. Little stop so it doesn't go through there. You adjust the height. See the holes up here? You can adjust for the height of the table saw and then uh, to get a taper tenon or a perfectly straight tenon to raise or lower this and it will adjust. I like it about ten thousandths per inch as far as taper. And turn this guy off. Oh, the whole system. It is the whole system. This is an air cylinder. That's all that's in here is air. It pushes and pulls. It's got power in both directions, controlled by the little micro switch with the solenoid control valve. This cylinder, the only thing in here is oil. Very specific on the oil. It's a mobile spindle oil. Uh, six, what is it? Six weight, ten viscosity, or ten weight, or six viscosity, whatever. Spindle oil. That's the only thing you can run into. And we only use cylinders, the tie rod cylinders from McMaster Car. They've never given us a problem. We tried some other stuff sometime and it was just a pain. But these have consistently worked really good. McMaster Car tie rod cylinders. They're out of Chicago. Oh, let's see. Yeah, this pivots. So it adjusts to the taper tenon and whatever. This will pivot back and forth. Or one, 
It's locked into position once everything is set, but it's on bearings. You can see the one inch bearings in there. Okay, one inch bearing, one inch bearing, and it, so it makes it very rigid. Again, linear shafts, turn ground and polished. And inside of here, the linear bearings, linear bearings, there's one, two, three on this part of it. It's a push me, pull you unit, where it's pushing and pulling, but it's absolute power under control. That's how this works. It's so much power, but it is controlled precisely. Power under control. The system, oil system, must be under pressure constantly. This maintains, we keep it at 30 pounds, ideally. This is the oil in it. You can see it's really thin oil. Six weight. Number six. Number six, mobile oil. Single oil, what it's called. Okay. The speed is controlled with the little needle valves. You turn it to turn it clockwise to slow it down, counterclockwise to speed it up. This one controls where the fluid comes unrestricted. No, unrestricted in that direction, and as it comes in, it has to go through the valve. So it's controlled in one direction, but with the two valves, it's controlled for both directions. Unrestricted flow one way, restricted the other. Absolute control in both directions and infinitely adjustable on the feed speed. Okay, you saw it come back and when the stop would hit this, right here, when it would hit right there, there, yeah, it would hit this, but it would pause. See here, time delay, relay inside, set at two and a half seconds. You can adjust the time on it, but it's so when it comes back and it hits the, the stop, it's still clean up on the shoulder. Now, an extremely important thing on how all of this works. Look how nice and smooth that tenon is. Even amongst all the knots. See how smooth that is? Okay. We're going to do something. Make sure it's on there good. Look how smooth it is. How smooth that is. It's cutting with the grain on the upstroke. All this stuff that you see out there where it's cutting against the grain. You know what, it's much easier to make a machine like that, but the tenon that it makes looks like crap. That was rough, crude. There'll never be competition when it comes to a finished product. But this is how it looks right off of the tenon cutter. So nice and smooth, just like that. It's amazing, but it has to cut with the grain in order to do that. Uh, let's see. Pattern. Have a pattern around. We cut tenons for other people quite often. And this is a pattern that one of them gave me. It matches up to their drill bits. So it match up stuff to their hole sizes. How many hundreds and hundreds and no, thousands of parts are cut for them? Yeah, lots. Lots of customers who just cut parts for them. Very profitable. What else you want to know? Huh? You got questions about other stuff? This. You see the tank up here? There is the tank, the reservoir. Under pressure, yeah, all good. Everything, as much as possible, it all flows uphill. So if, when you set it up initially and then set this up, you got to get the air bubbles out of it because if there's air bubbles in there, it gets jerky. It goes, da, 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 da. Can't have air in the system. So you see the cylinder, the exhaust, <laughs> exhaust ports. They are up so it gets all of the air out of the cylinder. And then it washes it out uphill into here. But all of that stuff has to go. So the bubbles go out eradicating air from the system and you gotta keep it's gotta be clean spotless clean in there no contaminants 
What's this? <laughs> this stand. Yeah, I mean, when it's uh, traveling back and forth on the saw. The center of balance changes. And this, because it's really touching, it's being supported here, at this spot where the stand is. It's being supported theoretically. On the very end, on the other end, it's sitting on the top of the table saw. Right here, you can probably slide a sheet of paper in between there, but it's held down tight on this end and that end because when this whole carriage goes back and forth, when it slides, the center of balance changes and it will dark up the tenon. It'll get it goofed up if this, if this whole thing is rocking. So this uh, outrigger foot, very important. You want to look inside? There. There you can see inside. Shaft with, well, bearings and U-bolts that hold it to the whole thing. Fasten it all together. Tremendous amount of ability, amount of ability, tremendous amount of ability in a very small package. Extreme accuracy, quite magnificent. Very fast. And all the gloppy knots that like this, all the knots, and it made absolutely no difference hitting those knots. But see how smooth that is as it's cutting on the, I say the downstroke, but it's always, the blade is always turning towards, turning towards the middle of the part. Cutting on a, well here, upstroke, but it's cutting towards the center. Cutting with the grain, always with the grain, always with the grain, never on any of the radius shoulder tenons cutting against the grain. It gets, if you do that, it just blows chips out all over the place. It looks really crude. <laughs>